Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Ark Survival Ascended. Today we're going to go over a quick start guide to get you into the game and having some fun slaying some dinos, taming some dinos, all that good stuff. So here is the main menu. To the left and the right you'll see some news and some featured posts. You have your escape menu for settings. You'll have join your last session. So if you quickly get into your game and get into the action or most people are going to be here for the first time. So you're going to press the either space or click on start. Here you're going to have four options, survival of the fittest, which is like a battle royale, not currently available. You can join a game like a server or a friend server. You can either create or resume a game. So if you have a single player game or you want to make a server for you and your friends and then the mods list here, you have all kinds of different mods and then also ones that you have installed here. You can basically browse through, add them. You click on something, you can download it. You can check out some of the information on that, how many installs. And then you can also sort everything here. Now we're going to go to create game, which is where most people are going to start. Uh, here you're going to see a couple different things. It might be a little overwhelming, so just stick with me. First one here is your the island. This is your map. This is the only map currently available on release. You also have some modern maps. So some mods that come out, you'll have maps that are custom that you can play on. And then the top here, mod settings. If you have any mods or if you want to turn mods on some game rules, you can change things like how much damage you do, how much you take how much stamina you use, how much your dinos take and use, um, different things for structure, multipliers for XP, different things like speed, you can turn that back on if you'd like. Um, advanced settings here for PvE, PvP, the world, if you want to turn on nighttime speed, I have mine set to two, so it's a little bit quicker. It's not all day at night. Um, harvesting, dino and taming imprints, speeds, um, different things like how much stats level up every time you level them up for you and your dino. And just some extra things you might want to play around with. Just be careful. Some settings are redundant. So if you change it in one aspect and you change another setting, sometimes they don't go together very well. So you might have to kind of fiddle around with some of that. Also, engrams, you can turn these on or off if you like. So say you don't want somebody to make a water jar, you can just click that and turn that off. But we're going to keep everything pretty much normal how I have it set up. And we're basically going to just start single player down here. So after that loads up and everything, you're going to be greeted with the character selection screen. This is basically your creator. You can create different characters. You can choose presets, however you'd like to do it, male or female up here. And then your name, you can also do all these different sliders and everything like that. So after you finish creating your character, you can just come over here and create. You could also save him. So if you want to join different servers you just load it right up, you don't have to go through the whole arduous process of setting all up or you can always randomize it as well. There we go. So after you hit that button, you're going to be greeted with this screen. The screen goes over your spawn points. So all these red spots are the hardest, then going to the yellowish orange and then to the green. You're going to want to start out with somewhere easy, especially if you're trying to get the hang of the game. You don't want to be jumping in right into a volcano and getting killed by Rexes and stuff like that. You want to enjoy it a little bit. Um, so I usually recommend one of these first three. Um, I've played one and two, so let's try number three. We'll see where that puts us. After that, you're going to hit the spawn and then give that a second. That'll spawn you in. All right, after you hit the spawn button, you might have a small cutscene. You can skip that with the space bar if you don't want to watch it or if you've already seen it. And then you'll spawn in. Now, you have to be careful because sometimes you will spawn in next to enemies and they will be attacking you. You might want to kind of just get away from that. But the first thing I do recommend is hitting the escape button if you're on PC. Here is your escape menu. You can go to settings, save game. Now, sometimes your game will crash. It is a brand new game in early access, so you're going to have to expect things like that. I recommend hitting the save button. You come in here, you hit save. It takes about three seconds. It's worth saving your progress every couple minutes, maybe 10 minutes or so, or if you do a lot of work. Just make sure you don't have to roll back because sometimes it doesn't save for a little while and you might tame an awesome dino and then your game crashes and you just lost the dino. So next I'll go into the settings. You're going to want to mess with a lot of this stuff, especially the sound. I know I turned my main menu music off. It's very loud. Um, you can turn on some of the video settings, change some of these. You most likely will have to play around with a lot of this in the beginning because the game isn't very optimized yet. Um, RTX, if you want to turn on DLSS to basically upscale your image from a lower resolution. So the game renders low, but looks really good. Uh, helps a lot with frames. If you have an RTX card, some UI stuff, if you want to change crosshair or anything like that camera i know some people like turn off the bobbing and the camera shake scale as well as in video here you can turn off the motion blur i also have my game capped to 30 fps just to keep it smooth so it's not hitchhiking all over the place um, but usually 60 is like a sweet spot next over here advance you can change some of this stuff on here keyboard and gamepad are very important if you're playing on mouse and keyboard come through here look through everything customize it you're going to want to know your wish list selections most likely or at least a hotkey to get to the tab because if you're in a fight you want to know how to get your dinos to do what you want to do 
um, different inventory stuff, all the hotkeys here, as well as if you're on a controller, you can customize that here. Now make sure at the bottom you hit the save before you back out because it doesn't automatically save. As well as they have restore in case you mess something up or you don't like something, you just restore it all back to the original. So we hit back or escape to get out of there. Um, other than that, then basically you're off to the races. I usually recommend to survey your surroundings. Like over here, we have this big bird. We do not want to mess with him. He will destroy us even with some good gear. So you want to basically find a nice spot that's not really crowded by all these mobs. And you're going to start farming a little bit, harvesting your first resources. If you're on keyboard, you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. This gives you a little bit of better perspective. What you want to look for here is basically you're going to want to run around and start pressing E, your action button. You're going to want to pick up some rocks on the floor as well as some plants here. Now you can sit here and press E or you can hold it and that will give you the resources. Now these plants here are important for fiber. Fiber is a important crafting resource for a lot of things so you're going to need a lot of fiber. Um, and then also it gives you some berries which you'll need to tame things as well as you can eat and or use to knock things out with so specific berries. So after you got a little bit of that, you're going to want to come to a tree. Any tree will do if you want to do this stump looking one or if you want to do this tree that's kind of dead here. You're going to want to punch this tree but be careful it does do some damage to you. It's not going to kill you right away but you don't want to punch trees all day long. You want to make tools to make it more efficient. So you're going to want to get a little bit of thatch which is the first one and a little bit of wood which is the second one. Once you get that you might have a level or two. So once you open the inventory here, you have a character on the right. So if you have gear or if you get a haircut, you can look at that. As well as the left side is your inventory. In the middle shows you all your gear. And then in the middle is all your stats. So health, stamina, oxygen, which is only really good for the water. Food and water, which is how much you can hold at a time. Weight is how much you can carry. Melee damage is how much you do with different weapons like a club or spear. Crafting skills, how fast you will craft things as well as the efficiency of that. And then fortitude, which might be a little confusing, is basically how much you can resist heat or cold. This does take a little while to build up and it doesn't make an instant improvement. But if you have so many points, then you can always just throw them into there. I'm going to recommend to start out with stamina and weight pretty early on because those two th are to be determining factors how long you can go and do things without getting bogged down. After you level up, this will take you to the second tab up here, which is your engrams, which are basically your recipes and how to craft things. You're going to know these first three off the bat. Next, you're going to want the campfire, the hatchet, and the spear. These are going to be some vital tools that you're going to need. And then after that, you have your tribe manager. If you're playing with friends or on a tribe on a server, you want to make sure you set some of this up. You don't want somebody to basically destroy stuff without your permission, um, unclaimed dinos, stuff like that. I usually turn that off. And then after that is your tracking for your dinos. So if you have some dinos, you can track them on here with a little UI element on the screen, which is really cool. And then in here is your explorer notes, which basically show you a little bit about the game, a little bit of trivia and stuff like that. And then here is the map. You can zoom in and out, make waypoints, all that good stuff. Back to the inventory here. We're going to come over here to the crafting. We also have cosmetics if you have any skins. And we're going to work on making this pickaxe here. So we need some stone. We already have wood. We need a little bit more thatch. Uh, we're going to avoid this big bird here. We're going to go this way. Stone is usually just picked up off of the beach, off the coast here. You want to make sure you have nothing in your hands when you're trying to grab these resources as well. Because if you're trying to grab a stone with a pickaxe in your hand, it's not going to give it to you. Um, as well as for the water here, whenever you get thirsty, you can look on the right side of your screen. The first one is weight, then it is water, then your hunger, your stamina, your health, and your XP. So when you get thirsty, come to any water and just drink that up. You don't have to clean it or anything like that. Uh, we're just going to run around the beach, pressing E, trying to pick up some stones. All right, once you've gathered enough resources, back into your inventory, crafting, and you can either hit E or you can double click to craft that. You'll have a little crafting queue. Now, be cautious of crafting or repairing your items. You will move a little bit slower. I'll have to show you in a second. So if you're being chased by a dino, you don't want to be crafting in the middle of that. You're going to run really slow. Then after that, you can take the item and you can drag it to your hotbar or wherever you'd like. Then you got your pickaxe. Now the pickaxe is good for the secondary resource of items. And there's also an axe, which is good for the primary. So for example, a tree, you're going to expect to get wood out of a tree. But pickaxe is going to give you thatch, which is kind of like the bark. And then we're also going to need some flint, which is the secondary of a rock. So rocks will give you stone. We got a little baby turtle here. And they also give you flint. If you get to a certain special rock, you'll get metal as well. I'll show you that. Once we gathered all the flint that we need, we can go to crafting and we can make a stone hatchet and a couple stone spears. And then hatchet will give you the primary. So for a tree, wood, and for rocks, stone. And also when you're harvesting different creatures, 
the axe will give you more hide and the pickaxe more meat. All right, so now we're going to make a couple spears. Um, now, they do have a little bit of weight, so you don't want to make like 80 of them. But they do break very easily or if you want to throw them. And then I'll show you here. See how slow we move while we're crafting? So you have to be very cautious of when you're crafting out in the wild. And then we also have our first victim here. Now, we also got a couple levels just kind of doing what we were doing. I'm going to put the first couple levels into stamina and weight. I think those are pretty crucial. And then also on here, we're going to learn the thatch building stuff, which is our first system of building. And then the sleeping bag, which is our spawn reset point. Um, now, the sleeping bag only has one use. Eventually, you'll learn this bed here, which is unlimited as long as it doesn't get destroyed. We'll also learn this storage box. All right, so you're going to want to look for some creatures that you can take out pretty quickly um, to get a little bit of food, some hide you need for a lot of crafting resources, and then some experience of, as well. Um, this guy here, if you see on top of him, this dodo, that heart means he's mate boosted. That means there's also, there's a male and a female somewhere that get a little bit stronger and a little bit more health and everything because they are together. And then that one on top of the red heart is a baby. So that means this guy and this guy right here is his baby. So it sounds pretty bad, but if you kill both the parents, you can take the baby for yourself. All right, and then after taking those out, you can use your axe. I usually recommend you use that to get the hide. And you have to be careful these little bugs will get you. These will actually drain your stamina. So you have to be careful that they don't linger too long. Um, and then we can harvest them as well. Now sometimes it's a little bit hard to get them. Sometimes you have to crouch. Sometimes you have to get it right angle to kind of hit the bodies. I know in this game because it's new it's still kind of buggy. But alright so from that we got some meat, some hide. The meat is really good to eat as well as to, for your dinos. And then the hide is using a lot of recipes from armor to saddles and all that good stuff we also got some of these berries here now these purple mejo berries are very important because a lot of the dinos like to eat these preferably versus the other berries these white ones will give you some stamina but they will dehydrate you these black ones would be the opposite they will actually put you to sleep but you want to save these because you want to put the dinos to sleep not yourself uh, put yourself to sleep you're not going to have a good time but the rest of these you can kind of just munch on if you want um, these flowers you have to be careful because these ones or kind of rare and they're good for certain teams. Now you see these bars at the bottom, these actually spoil and I'll show you a neat little trick the meat does as well, a neat little trick about that. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is grab a tame. So these dodos are super easy to tame. You just run up to them and give them a couple punches and in one punch and he's knocked out. I'm just a one punch man, I don't know what to say. But he's unconscious now. A lot of dinos you will have to knock out to tame them and then you will feed them their preferred food. Some dinos you'll have to passively tame. So you have to hold it like a berry in your hand and follow them around, not scare them and feed them that way. So this one we knocked out. You can see his unconscious bar. He does wake up after a short time. So you have to pay attention to that. If not, you have to pump him full of those narco berries to keep him sleeping. Or if you turn those into a concentrate called narcotics. Um, and then it shows you some of his stats. He's female, level two. And uh, the dodos just eat berries. I have some of these purple ones. I'll pop those in there. And then you'll see here, instantly tame because he was already kind of hungry. And then we can name him, let's name him Jerry. And then there we go. He is ours. He is our best friend. He will do anything for us. We can pick him up if we want. Not all dinos you can do this, but this one you can. Um, if you don't want to, you can just click and drop him down. This basically shows you his level, who he's following. Um, you, can just, you can tell him to stay, tell him to follow you. Make sure you check out your keybinds for that. And then also his stats, like his health, if he's mating or if he's attacking your target or if he's passive, anything like that. Now, this creature doesn't look like he's going to do too much. He's a tiny little duck looking thing. The importance of this guy, especially starting off, is going to its inventory and see how this meat has his bar here. It has about 11 minutes of spoil time and these berries, the berries just disappear, but the meat will spoil. But if you don't want that to happen, you can put these right into their inventory and that's 15 minutes, and now this meets 11, that's gonna jump up to 45. So it actually increases the spoil timer by quite a bit. So if you wanna put all these narco berries in here, um, he'll only eat the things that he wants to eat first, so he's not gonna eat these berries, but that's great because they don't have to worry about all the stuff he worked for, spoiling. Just throw it in here. You wanna throw some of your resources in here, have him follow you around like a little treasure chest, you can do that. Just be careful, he will die very easily. He's got, let's see, 50 health, 43 health, so he's probably going to get one tap pretty easily. Um, but as he levels up, you can level up his stats just like your own. You can check his food, his weight, all that good stuff. And then also, when he dies, you will he will drop his bag, so you can pick it back up. But you have to be careful because sometimes it will despawn. And you also don't want him to die in the water because that always is an issue. But he has a little tracker. Uh, you can turn that tracker off by holding R. 
and he'll follow you around, do basically your bidding, he's your little servant. So after him, I usually recommend maybe starting out with a little base. So we're just going to basically farm up some more of those resources, the wood, thatch, and fiber. All right, so we got lots of different resources here, and as you see on the right side, our inventory weight sign is flashing. That means we are over encumbered. We will move slower, as well as we usually can't run or jump. So you have to be very careful and don't do this and then get chased by a dino. Go into our inventory here, and we're going to level up the weight a little bit. And we got all these ready to go, so now we're going to craft them. Go to crafting. We can either double click once or press E once, or if we press the A button, it'll craft all the ones that we want. We're just going to make a little simple 2x2 two two here. If you make too many, you can cancel it. That'll cancel everything but the one you're currently on, and then you redo that there. Uh, we're going to need 8 of these walls. And then we're going to need um, a door and then some ceilings. I also recommend making this bed as soon as you can too in case you die. All right, so I got all that stuff crafting. While that is crafting, I did do, get a couple levels. So I'm going to come back into the engrams. And I'm going to want to get the mortar and pestle here, the narcotic. If you want to do the simple bed, it's great because it has multiple respawns. Um, spyglass is really good in cook a pot. Spyglass, you do need a crystal to make, so it's kind of hard to get that, but uh, very helpful. And then once you craft all these guys, you can drag these right to your hotbar. And then you can start building. And this basically shows you where it's going to be placed. And then once you click, you can put it either up or down. Now, if you put it up real high, it might be hard to get on in and out. Put it right down real low, you might have some clipping issues like those rocks that are sitting right there. So I usually do it like right in the middle there. And then these can all snap to each other. There we go. And then we're going to build all the walls. Now, the walls are cool in this uh, game because they changed a little bit. You have four different options here at the bottom. You have the regular wall. You have the door the tall door and the window. So why don't we put a couple of windows and two doors, put two windows there, uh, then we'll do a doorway here and maybe a doorway here just in case we need to get out. It's always good to have an extra exit and then the rest will just be walls there. Um, and then here we got the door. Um, now I did only make one door because I want to show you at the bottom. See that door is still there. It's kind of grayed out. If I press and hold, it'll show me what I need to make another one. And if I just press that button, for example, this one's number five, it'll just craft it right from my hotbar. So I don't have to go into inventory crafting and do all that. I just press that. There we go. And then the ceiling here, put those down. And there you go. We got that first little house. Now there's a couple more things that I made that I do want to put down. We have a campfire here now if you see this does snap automatically if you don't want that just hit hold and Q button and you can put that wherever you'd like I'm gonna put it over here in the corner uh, we did make a mortar and pestle which is very important there we go uh, we have a sleeping bag now once you click it once with the left click you also rotate it if you'd like and then also we'll put this treasure chest down here so campfire you're gonna want to throw some of that raw meat that you have I think the dino has it hey buddy you can grab that and you can cook that up grab some of the wood so uh, I'll show you something real quick once we get this in there. there we go. And then we'll just light that. That'll show us what we're cooking, how much fuel we got. Now, if we look at this, it does say E to put out fire. Usually that's how you access. But because this has a accessible button like that, instead of pressing E, you're going to sit there and put the fire on and out. If you hit F, that'll go directly into it. Just like a dino, if you want to ride the dino versus access the inventory. Or like this dino here, if I press E on it, it's going to pick him up. I don't want to pick them up every time I want to access inventory. So all you do is press F and I'll go into your, their inventory for you. So that's a neat little trick there. So this will cook up in the meantime. There goes one. And then you can just drag this to the hot bar and you can eat that by pressing the button. Um, this mortar and pestle here, you're going to want to gather those black narco berries here. Oh, I think he has one here. There we go. And then you're also going to want to gather some spoiled meat. But we'll put that in there and you'll make this narcotic here. Five berries and one meat, and that narcotic is good to make trank arrows, trank darts, or even feed directly to a knocked out dino. Um, other than that, you can basically store all your goodies in here, and then they'll basically be safe there. Now, a lot of dinos can destroy most of these structures. This is only thatched, the first building tier. Even wood, stone, those can be destroyed pretty easily by certain dinos. So I'd be careful with some of the locals. You don't want to make them upset and come stomp down your house. Um, your boxes and stuff will drop little bags but they only last so long but other than that that basically is it for this area we have a little house the campfire isn't going to burn down the house so you don't have to worry about that but just looking at all these items it tells you a little bit about what they are and like the durability for example if your house gets attacked you can repair it so after this what i'd recommend is looking for some of these smooth rocks so you want to come towards the water here these smooth rounder rocks they actually have a little bit of metal in them 
So you want to grab your pickaxe and you're going to want to kind of harvest these. So you see there on the left side, the top two, that's actually metal. So that's what we're going to be working towards next to get some metal tools. It's much more efficient and they last a little bit longer and then you can get more metal as well. So these little river rocks are great because there's nothing over here that's really going to bother us. The best option to get metal is to head up to the mountains because there's a lot of metal up there, but there's a lot of dangerous creatures. So because of those dangerous creatures, you're going to want to get your own creatures that could be dangerous. So the best thing to do that is after you get some of this resources, I would say gear up on some armor. It will level up your character, health, stamina, all that good stuff. Make some of this armor here. A water skin is great to hold out a little water. It does leak though, so keep an eye on that. And then also down here, you're probably going to want this bola here. And then maybe a bow and some arrows and eventually tranquilizer arrows. This bola is great because you can whip this onto a dino and basically prevent it from moving. So the next two dinos I'd recommend working on getting is this parasaur here and this trike. Now these are great because they're easy to tame. Um, they're not very aggressive. The trike is if you attack it, but they're going to be great to help you gather berries or even just haul your resources around. Now this trike does have armor on its face, so you have to be careful. You want to hit the body instead of the face to knock it out because he, he's going to resist a lot. Uh, I'll show you how to do that here. We're actually going to go back into the engrams. Um, this slingshot here uses rocks and you can basically fling rocks at them to knock them out. Or you can make this wooden club and just bash them over the head. Uh, the slingshot's a little easier because you don't have to be right in front of them. So we'll, we'll make that slingshot. And then we'll also make this bola here and I'll show you how those work. All right, so now we crafted the bola right here. And then we also have the slingshot with also some rocks in our inventory as ammo. So you have to be careful anytime you're attacking anything that your dinos don't attack as well. So I'm actually gonna come over here and I'm gonna put him on passive. And I just set that as B on my keyboard, uh, which you could set to whatever you'd like just to ease of access there. And uh, we're gonna come over to this triceratops here. We're gonna use our bola and what we have to do is wind this up and if you see how it's a red there that means you bola this guy it's just going to break and waste it now if we look for this parasaur there's a green that means when you throw it at him it's going to trap him and he's not going to be able to move he can still hit you and everything and you can remove the bola if you like but um that'll help you tame him much easier and then for example we're going to use a slingshot and we're going to shoot rocks in his face until he falls asleep sounds really bad but Trust me, he'll be okay. Um, some dinos cannot come out like this, though. They will die before they get knocked out. This guy might even as well. So you have to be careful. See how he's getting all bloody? He might actually die before he gets knocked out. Oh, actually, he, there you go. He falls asleep. You can look at his stats. Um, this guy's going to want some berries, and then that will tame him up. Now, when they do fall over, you want to make sure you, nothing hits them, and you don't hit them, because it's going to reduce how effective that tame is. So for example, if this is level 10, when you knock him out and tame him, you might gain a couple levels. If you get hit, you might not gain any levels. Now also sometimes when you are attacking these dinos, if they start to run away, that means either they're low on torpor, which is the measurement of how sleepy they are, or they're low on health, or they can't get to you and they're kind of just retreating. Oh, there we go boys, just in time, our slingshot broke and he is sleeping. I also want to try to avoid the water because there's piranhas all over the place and they will eat up your dino. But if you look here, he is unconscious. He has a purple bar just like the dodo. All right, then once he tames, you can go into his inventory, check his stats, put a saddle on him, and then you can ride him around. This guy has a low stamina, but he's pretty powerful and good defense. He's great for gathering berries um, and different things out of these trees here. So you just come up, hit the left click. Now a lot of abilities also are entwined with the alternate key, which is usually all or the C character on your keyboard. So for example, a pterodon, one of the flying guys, does a little barrel roll with that. Um, this guy can also do the charge. You just hold your right click. On the right side, you'll see the little heart charge up and then let go and he'll do his big charge. Um, other than that, he is great for helping you out, just keeping him around, a little bodyguard. But if you see there, we're getting a lot of those blackberries, those narco berries those are going to be very important to collect and then use those to make the narcotics so then you can tame some more aggressive creatures to help you throughout the, the islands but other than that that's pretty much it the good little starting what i would do is focus on those rocks getting some metal get some other creatures there's a raptor up ahead you can either kill those for xp if you kill them with your dino you get dino gets xp you can level them up just like you um, and then basically you're going to want to tame stronger creatures more creatures things that are more efficient I do want to show you this other thing real quick. I also want to show you this. It's called the Dodo Dex. It's an app you can download on your phone, your tablet, whatever you like. 
and it's also a website. So it basically is a huge library of all the things ARC. So creatures, resources, how to tame the creatures. For example, if you click on this raptor here, it tells you everything you need to know about him, what level you want to tame him, if he's level 4, if he's level 100, how much more resources you're going to need, different efficiencies, how long it's going to take. So this is great just to stumble upon if you're in school board or at work board. Just take a look at this. Take a look at some of the creatures you're interested in. Um, it's going to tell you if you need the narcotics to keep him sleeping. For example, I'll show you the Giga here is one of the most fearsome creatures. You need 372 for level 100 Giga to keep him sleeping so you can tame him. Plus 14 of these kibbles to get a good tame on him. Then it's also going to show you how to knock them out, what the best and most efficient way is. Tranquilizer darts are usually the way to go. Um, and then what kind of weapon. So for example, a bow with tranks or a crossbow with tranks. The, bow, the crossbow is a lot more efficient. And then also some of the stats, how it will increase when you level him up, when you tame him. And then some little tips, strategies, knocking him out, what he's good for. And then also what to avoid if you get up to him, if you're trying to tame him. That kind of stuff. Now I also want to show you one more thing that's really important as you're learning the game and as you're taming more dinos. Come down here to the knockout section. If you look here, fists, boomerang, um, they do actually have a chance of killing the dino before he's knocked out. So a 66% chance that you'll kill the dino before he falls asleep. So you have to be very careful using those methods. The best methods, of course, are going to be use some of these darts and the tranquilizer stuff. Um, you could also use different dinos that do torpor damage. So those, like for example, the frog and stuff, they actually do a torpor to the animal. They do do a lot of damage too, so you have to be careful. They might have low health by the time that they're knocked out, but... You should be able to knock them out every time. But for example, if you're using one of these methods, you actually end up might killing them if you don't wait long enough. As a torpor, you hit them, and it takes a few seconds to distribute all the torpor. So yeah, boys, that was a little bit of a quick start guide to get you started in ARC, whether you're a veteran, whether you just want to pick up some extra tips and tricks, or it's your first time playing the game. So definitely leave a comment if there's anything that I helped you out with. Hit the like and hit the sub if you want to see some more. Appreciate you for watching, and good luck surviving on the ARC.